Um, so how did you first come to be involved in the Expendables? Was it a quick phone call by Stallone? That seems to be the case for, for many of the others. <laughs> well, um, actually, it was a, as I said before, I, I ran into uh, Slide in, in a parking lot in Los Angeles like two or three years ago. He already was very successful with the Expendables, and he said to me, you have to come, you have to come and, and be part of it. And, and I said to him that I, I didn't want to play a bad guy. <laughs> so years after he called me one morning and says, you know, I, I wrote this character with, with, with you in mind, so just take a look at it and uh, let me know. I would love to have you in the movie. So that's what I did. I read it and, 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 and I loved it. And I said, yeah, I, I, I am in. Oh. Yeah. So why, why were you not too keen on playing a, a villain? Uh, kind of... Uh, okay. Kind of joking, joking with him a little bit uh, when I when I said that, uh, but he took it very seriously <laughs> because, <laughs> because he included me in the group. You know, by the end of the of this movie, that's what happened to Gargo. You know, he's getting accepted finally. Wow, because he's looking for that. The character is completely obsessed with that possibility, basically because I think uh, my character Gargo is a very solitary guy, a very lonely person you know, who got a story behind that he that is painful, and he tries to cover that story, you know, personal story, with this kind of frantic attitude, you know. It's, it's, and then he, he, he builds this kind of shield around him that, that is uh, quite extraordinary, actually, now I think about it. Because <laughs> he kind of provides most of the comedy in the film, but he is probably the most tragic character it's true. of the lot. And I was wondering, did you give him a real backstory? Did you kind of create this whole world before the Expendables? Yeah. The, the character was not a, a Spanish legionnaire at the beginning or anything like that, so I made him that. <laughs> he was a legionnaire and he was fighting in different wars, real war uh, wars that I had in mind, where the Spanish legion has been, you know, Afghanistan, blah, blah. And, and, and then the, this thing happened to him, this, this thing that, that uh, kind of destroyed his life, and he becomes a mercenary, but, but he's alone. And, and he's probably not very successful <laughs> at the time. But he heard, he heard about this group, the Spaniels. Mm. Oh, I would like to be part of that. <laughs> so he's just really, really knocking at the door. Probably has been knocking for years, you know, they know him. Um, he just is pretending to be what he's not all the time. You know, he says that he was born, born in 1984, I wish. <laughs> but uh, no. So, so th that kind of thing provokes a lot of comedy. And I saw it very, very, very uh, early in the script, and I said, oh, he's a character I'd like to play. And it must have been great to, to team up with Stallone again. Follow, I mean, Assassins, obviously, was a while ago now. It must be been nice yeah. to, to see him on set again. Yeah, yeah. I, I, have, I feel a great deal of respect for, for, for Sly Stallone. And, and definitely and, and knowing him and knowing, you know, uh, how much of a fighter he is. Uh, um, very, very smart guy, you know, who, who knows how to create his own job. He doesn't wait for anybody to call him. He just work all the time creating these characters, you know, in his style. There's a style that he chooses, but he's unbelievably honest. And uh, so I, I love that uh, from him. As for your own career, you've often moved between sort of, sort of action-heavy, quite big, sort of productions to the more sort of intimate the Woody Allens and the Almodovar films. Is that how you like to work? Do you like to just mix between this, yep. the two t sort of types of cinema? I, I think that is my work as an actor, to have uh, the range that allow me to go from genre to genre, and uh, from director to director, and, and, and having the possibility to give them uh, things that are different, you know, that I may have. I, I, I don't try to be arrogant saying that, thinking that I can do anything, but definitely I am very daring. <laughs> Talking of which, Terence Malick's Knights of Cups is, yep. is one. That must be quite a, a unique experience. Oh my God, that was... That, that if You know, if there is something called freedom in movies, is what I found on that set. That was an incredible day uh, of working. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, he gave me a monologue of nine pages uh, <laughs> that really didn't make so much sense. <laughs> uh, and then we changed it during the whole entire day. And uh, it, it was very uh, extraordinarily weird experience, uh, but very, very, very cinematic. I knew that what we were doing was very meaningful somehow, and very special. 
um, without even knowing if I was going to make it to the screen or not. But one day they called me and they said, hey, you are in the movie and we want to use your name as a fifth name in the movie. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but I didn't even know because half of Los Angeles work in the movie. I mean, he was shooting for a long time. He doesn't cut. He starts shooting and keeps going, 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 going. You may just get out of the take and then you go back if you have an idea and an uh, interesting experience. Mm. Half of Los Angeles sounds a bit like the Expendables, actually. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but in a different, completely different style. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank today. You.